thank you very much. Professor Chairman, honorable members of parliament, members of the diplomatic community, officials of sister political parties, my own NDC comrades, representatives of civil society organizations, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you all for your presence at this important event to explore a few thoughts on campaign financing and to launch the GM 2024 fundraising platform. In an interaction I had with civil society organizations and other public advocacy groups in November last year, we had a broad-based discussion on issues of governance reform and how we can strengthen our democracy and restore faith in our constitutional governance and the rule of law. A theme that kept recurring during this meeting was the issue of campaign financing and its link to corruption and influence peddling in government. This topic, I believe, is very close and dear to the hearts and minds of many Ghanaians. I do not have all the answers, but it is my expectation that as a key stakeholder in Ghana's political space, my comments on this issue will elevate the public discourse on the matter and hopefully lead to necessary reforms in this area. Let me also thank my colleagues on the John Mahama 2024 team for the initiative to reopen a conversation of financing political campaigns, something that has been on the table from the very start of our political journey. I must also show appreciation to the civil society organizations, research institutions, and individuals that have supported us to host this ninth event. And these include Frederick Ebert Foundation, Ghana, who paid for the use of this venue. I thank you very much. CSO partners such as Imani, CDD, IDEG, Ghana Integrity Initiative, COPEC, as well as the Political Science Department of the University of Ghana, Ligon, which provided some expert views on the subject matter. Indeed, it's my hope that the discussion will resume from here and reform efforts will start to propel our democracy to build the Ghana we all want. How it all started, a group of young fintech entrepreneurs sought an appointment with me in my office one day, and um, they said they had been thinking about how to help in the financing of political parties in order to democratize their funding and allow as many Ghanaians to participate in financing uh, political parties. And so we started a discussion and um, they made several presentations to us. At this stage, I remembered our discussion with the CSOs in November, and I remembered the whole discussion about financing political campaigns and corruption. And so I thought it would be a good thing to widen the discussion, not only in terms of democratizing political party financing, but also to discuss the whole issue of political campaign financing. And so that is what has brought us here today. I will in this presentation make a case for a more transparent and broad-based citizen participation in the financing of our political campaigns. I'll also outline and launch a smart digital retail fundraising platform for my 2024 campaign. Thanks to the very robust fixed and wireless broadband that I am proud to have contributed to installing across the country. During my tenure, both as communications minister and as president, vice president and president, Ghana today has enough internet capacity to power such digitalized applications. It is my hope that through this innovative, smart seed, political parties can broaden and nurture many trees with abundant branches for resource mobilization. Surely and hopefully such an intervention will address 
the dependency on a few individuals who finance political campaigns in return for favors, a recipe for corruption in any democracy. And if I may add, CSOs and other public spirited organizations can also adopt this system of broad based resource mobilization to fund the activities to limit the strictures that sometimes accompany donor funded research and advocacy in developing countries such as Ghana. So it will be of good use not only to political parties, but even to CSOs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this event says it all. We must reform the financing regime for political party activity in Ghana. While this issue may be as old as our Fourth Republic, having been advanced by many in the past, it still remains as relevant today. It is one piece in our democratic journey that has continued to elude reform. As a key actor in our political space since 1996, I can attest to the relevance of ethical campaign financing in Ghana. Campaign finance reform is not a challenge facing Ghana only. Even in the most advanced democracies like the United States, the issue of campaign finance continues to engage national attention. There have been efforts to promote small donor funding of political campaigning, especially in this era of super PACs. Currently, Ghana is struggling to secure an IMF program lest the country's economy collapses. This being the case, Ghana, Ghana at the moment cannot absorb the additional, extreme, um, the additional expenditure streams associated with political party financing. Truth be told, the state does support political parties in some ways. Many political parties have on many occasions had their filing fees returned to them after elections because they attained the minimum threshold of votes. This is a form of financing when your fees are given back to you. And it comes at a very good time, especially if you lose the election. You <laughs> when that money comes back, it pays a lot of bills. So this means that the state indirectly finances the filing fees for parties such as that. Also in the past, government has through the Electoral Commission procured and distributed vehicles, public address uh, systems to political parties in proportion to the share of the votes they received in the immediate past election. With the possibility of further state financing shuts, at least for now, I aim to reopen the conversation on political party financing with emphasis on needed reforms and regulation to promote transparent and broad-based financing options for political parties. Specifically, specifically, we want the national discourse to focus on the following key questions amongst others. How are political campaigns being financed in Ghana? And I'm very happy that Professor Ahoy opened up a bit on what it costs to uh, finance political campaigns. Um, in Ghana. Are political parties playing their role as vehicles for national development? And I think that um, uh, Dr. Aquete's um, expose on this was excellent. On the issue of government funding of political parties, is it feasible? And as I said, for now, with the crisis we're going through, it might be difficult to um, have government funding of political parties. In the various um, service I participated in and discussions that we had with IEA and several of the other um, um, think tanks. Um, the issue of uh, part, uh, government funding of political parties was very, very unfashionable with the Ghanaian public. They were not interested in hearing it at all. Should the EC's regulatory responsibility for political financing be reassigned to a separate statutory body? Are citizens in favor of such funding for political parties? And like I said, the answer we elicited was no. Should the Political Parties Act 200, Act, Act 574 be reviewed? If so, in what ways should that happen? And how can political parties promote a transparent and broad-based financing of their activities? And how can recent technological advancements assist in this regard? Ghana has had eight presidential and parliamentary elections since 1992, and three of these elections have led to peaceful transfers of power from one incumbent party 
to the party in opposition, namely the 2000, 2008, and 2016 elections. On the structure of our parties, the NDC and MPP, the two biggest parties, have maintained quite a good network across the country. And this has helped to generate strong interest in party politics among Ghanaians. As a result, there has been an averagely high voter turnout in our presidential and parliamentary elections. For example, the turnouts for 2004, 2008, 2012, 2016, and 2020 were 85%, 73 80%, 69%, and 79%, respectively. By peer standards, these are relatively high. And on that score, Ghana's democratic credentials have been touted um, among some of the best in our sub-region. However, this assessment ignores other aspects of our democracy that have not progressed, uh, in fact, impacting negatively on the progress that we have made so far. And this is to do with the level of transparency and depth of regulatory oversight on how political campaigns are funded. Usually the normal practice has been that a political party would derive its resources from regular dues paid by its members, donations by individuals, or special fundraising events organized by the party for such purposes. According to the CDD, and I think this is the same report um, that was being referred to by the previous speakers. In recent times, some financing of political campaigns has come from illegal activities, and I think Dr. Asante referred to that, such as illegal mining, oil bankering, fraudulent businesses, procurement deals in the award of contracts, and among others. The CDD study even reported that there could be a strong association between financing of political parties and organized crime in Ghana. This is indeed worrying. Worrying because it has the potential of mortgaging our governance system to criminals. If that happens, our democracy will be gradually turned into a plutocracy, a plutocracy, a country ruled indirectly by only a few wealthy individuals. Ladies and gentlemen, viable political parties play a strong role in promoting democracy and sustainable development in any country. They perform key roles in the formation of governments, develop leaders at various levels, and serve as a watchdog for incumbent governments. This is why we cannot continue to ignore the healthy development of our political parties, given the fact that they are state political institutions. On government support for funding political parties, some have argued that the only funding that may be advanced to parties and cannot be concealed in secrecy is public funding of these parties. This refers to government giving financial resources or indirect assistance to political parties. As mentioned, in the absence of such support and given the huge cost of political activities, wealthy party financiers take over as political godfathers who determine electoral outcomes and all that follows it. And as I stated earlier, because of our current economic crisis, additional state financing may not be a viable option at this time. Even if that became an option in the future, I recommend that we put in place an explicit public funding of political parties bill in a bipartisan and inclusive manner to regulate this phenomenon. I further recommend that should public funding of political parties be scaled up in the foreseeable future, then an independent and credible institution must be selected to administer the state resources advanced to political parties. In that regard, a sharing formula could be established to ensure fairness and specific disclosure requirements on beneficiary parties must be imposed. This must be complemented by auditing and publication of party accounts. Ladies and gentlemen, even though I do not recommend additional state financing at this time, I accept a lot more needs to be understood regarding how political parties are financed because these could have implications on our developmental outcomes. We must understand how politicians finance their campaigns for office 
and to whom they are indebted and are expected to pay back. It is therefore important we engage in a sustained discussion and build consensus on funding political parties within the context of public policy to promote good governance and democratic practice in Ghana. Regarding the needed reforms, the starting point may be Chapter 7 of Ghana's 1992 Constitution, Article 55, and also the Political Parties Act, Act 574, that regulates campaign financing. Whereas in the Constitution, room is made for non-financial support for political parties by institutions and external bodies, the Political Parties Act, Act 574, on the other hand, provides that only citizens of Ghana may make a contribution or donation to a political party registered in Ghana. According to the Act, a non, and I quote, a non-citizen shall not directly or indirectly make a contribution or donation or loan, whether in cash or in kind, to funds held by or for the benefit of a political party, and no political party or persons acting for or on behalf of a political party shall demand or accept a contribution, donation, or loan from a non-citizen of Ghana. Quotations closed. And this reminds me of an event we had as a party. I think I was a deputy minister or minister then. And we held a fundraising uh, dinner. And several uh, corporate institutions and individuals attended. And I remember there was a donation that was made by a construction company, uh, which at the time, <laughs> Nobody noted that it was a foreign company. And the next day, the media broke loose on it. And so the party had to officially return the donation. I'm sure those of you who are my age will remember this event. Political parties are also required to declare to the public their revenues and assets and the sources of those revenues and assets. On private sector options for political parties to source funding, some experts have made some interesting suggestions that are worth considering in our debate on this. And I'm going to um, refer to a resource uh, paper. In a recent paper authored by the Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honorable Alban S.K. Bagbin and Albert Ahinkang, titled Political Party Financing and Reporting in Ghana, Practition uh, Practitioner's Perspectives, the authors recommended setting up a regulated fund such as a common fund or a matching fund. This work by Bagbin and Ahinkan, together with the CDD reports and several others, are important resource documents for reform on campaign financing and could be a starting um, resource for our discussion on these issues. They opine that these, are, these must be well structured to serve as an incentive for political parties to source private sector funding from legitimate sources. And the idea of matching funds is interesting because it helps to promote small donations to political parties. And so for, if, for instance, a donor gave 50 Ghana CDs, then the matching fund could be established as 100% of the 50 Ghana CDs. And so the matching fund will give 100 in addition to the 50 and so the political party gets 150 from a 50 uh, CD donation. And so these are all things that we can um, consider. Our debate should certainly evaluate each of these proposals and bid, build consensus on the way forward. In sum, the jury is still out there whether there must be some public support for political party funding in Ghana and how to broaden the funding mix for these parties. We must therefore engage on the way forward in the interest of our democracy. And it's not only campaign financing that must uh, uh, attract our interest. We must be bold in reviewing the entire framework of our democratic experiment, identifying reform gaps in the legal and institutional frameworks, and pushing for reforms, whether in the Constitution, Acts of Parliament, or other legal frameworks that are holding back our progress. We must do so for most of our state institutions and act to mend the growing breach between society and Ghana's political system. We must also intensify stakeholder efforts and engagement on the National Anti-Corruption Action Plan, NACAP. It is sad observing Ghana's performance on the Transparency International Corruption Perspective Perception Index, scorecard, 
And after many years of NACAP's existence, this is not how we program NACAP to be. And um, I note um, Madam uh, Quaffo's uh, comment on transparency index and why we're stuck in the 40s. I hope that we should be able to fulfill her dream of being in the 80s sometime in the future. Our party, NDC, wants to build the Ghana we want together by writing not footnotes, not pages, but chapters in the anti-corruption history of our dear country, Ghana. We must also uphold human rights, including freedom of expression, and not describe journalists as terrorists. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, any agenda to build the Ghana we want together from 2025 will involve far-reaching constitutional, political, and governance reforms to restore confidence in our democracy and governance systems. We plan to take up and conclude the constitutional review process that was started under President John Evans Atamels of blessed memory. These reforms will include a review of the controversial Act 70, Article 71. I still believe that in this crisis period, Ghana can be managed with not more than 60 ministers. This review of Article 71 will enable us to cut down on the number of office holders and remove the disparities in privileges and emoluments. And as I announced in who, give us the, given the opportunity, God willing, scrap the payment of ex gratia to members of the executive and persuade other arms of government to accept the same. Those who oppose the scrapping of ex gratia, statement, uh, ex -gratia payments should state so explicitly instead of moving in meandering contours in a field attempt to trivialize this important promise. While I was determined to take this very action and others in the past when I had the opportunity through the implementation of the constitutional review process, a legal challenge that was eventually determined too late during my tenure and the MPP, our sister party, MPP's general opposition to the constitution review process made it impossible for us to proceed further with the review implementation phase. I have every confidence that an independent emoluments commission can determine the conditions of service of all public officers, from the president to the lowest ranking public officer on government's payroll. My brothers and sisters, that will institute a true and proper single spine to replace the current double spine salary system, where Article 71 office holders are on a different spine, while other public sector workers are on another spine. In building the Ghana we want, we will listen attentively to suggestions from civil society groups and the youth fronts on other constitutional reforms. I've heard the arguments asking for Articles 86 and 87 to be amended to have an entrenched provision for a comprehensive, long-term national development plan that will be binding on all successive governments so that it, stops, it, it, it ends the stop-go, start, stop, when any government comes, throws out the previous um, development plan and starts it soon. This is to curtail the uncoordinated approach to our long-term development and policy making. You may recall my administration developed the 40-year national development plan that was jettisoned in 2017 as soon as we left office. I've also heard the calls for the interface between the executive and the legislature in Article 78 to be dissolved to make Ghana's parliament truly independent. Additionally, I'm aware of calls for more autonomy for the police service and to ensure the rule of law by amending Articles 202 and 203. These voices advocate the depoliticization politicization of the police council and call for the appointment of leadership of the police service for a fixed term with security of tenure. This, it is believed, will loosen the current overwhelming control the executive maintains over the security service. Other areas include amendment of Article 243 to make for the election of district chief executives and Article 128 to put a cap on the number of 
justices that can be appointed to the Supreme Court. Of course, the Electoral Commission has become topical. The appointment of known party activists onto the Electoral Commission by our current president may require an amendment of Article 43.2 to provide for parliamentary approval of new commissioners appointed onto the Commission. The issues I've raised this evening are matters I wish to make a central part of the campaign in the lead up to the 2024 elections. And it's my intention that in the four year opportunity, I would, have, I would get, God willing, to reset our Ghanaian democracy. We will have the opportunity to work with CSOs and public advocacy groups and all willing voices to enhance reforms in our governance in order to establish an enduring democracy for Ghana. Let me assure you once again that I remain committed to these constitutional reforms. Ladies and gentlemen, as I indicated in my introduction, I intend to launch an interactive and smart digital retail fundraising platform to help democratize the scope of campaign financing with a view to addressing dependency on a few big donors. There are emerging opportunities for political parties to broaden the base of their funding. These new opportunities are being driven by technology and in particular electronic crowdfunding platforms as are being used in developed countries. I have therefore adopted a crowdfunding technology to promote a more transparent and accessible means to raise funds to execute my 2024 campaign. The use of reliable fintech payment systems will push this agenda to promote citizen participation in the financing of political party activities. We do not have to go far in search of such a robust solution because Ghana has a lot of young, talented fintech entrepreneurs who have invested so much within the digital ecospace and have already created a lot of employment opportunities for several Ghanaians. These fintech entrepreneurs are successfully using their innovations to transform various sectors of the Ghanaian economy, such as financial services, agribusiness, health, education, and many more. Ladies and gentlemen, on the back of all these achievements, we are launching this digitalized retail donation campaign tonight to mobilize small contributions from Ghanaians, both locally and in the diaspora. The platform is transparent and has a dashboard screen that will show all inflows uh, being donated in real time. The dashboard is in turn linked to a collection bank account so that proceeds from all the channels can be received directly and used for the intended purpose. Four channels will be made available for sending donations. These include a John Mahama campaign mobile money number, a USSD code, an official Zenith bank account number, and a John Mahama fundraising mobile app. There will also be a hotline you can call and access always to make inquiries. You can also email donations at johnmahama.org. I encourage everyone to donate freely, even if you're shy. <laughs> I must also emphasize that the retail donation platform is subject to the crowdfunding policy issued by the Bank of Ghana in February 2022. And therefore, the framework will be managed in line with strict regulatory policy. I therefore have the honor to um, call on the MC to invite the technical team to demonstrate how willing donors can donate to this campaign using the four channels. And uh, on this note, I uh, duly launch the John Mahama crowdfunding 2024 campaign. Thank you very much. And God bless us all.